that nothing in life is by mistake. Nobody rises by mistake, like I shared yesterday. Nothing happens by mistake. The Bible says to walk circumspectly, Ephesians chapter 5, as wise and not as unwise. And where is the wisdom? Capture all of the keys that can help you redeem time because the days are evil. So your wisdom is your ability to have dominion over time. Are we together now? The Bible says whoever can access the secrets that give you an advantage over time, you are walking in wisdom. Hmm. The greatest gift God gave man aside salvation is time. Are we together now? And the unit of destiny is time. Whatever affects your time affects your destiny. Are we together? And it so happens that our lives, um, many of us, uh, well, well, it's not the case in, in, in most parts of the, the, the West here, the, the Southwest, um, there's a, a heightened understanding of the things of God. So most young people grow up in families that know God. So it's very easy to connect them to the things of God. But it's not so around other parts of the nation. You would have to spend a very significant part of your life before you come into the knowledge of God. And already just for, just for knowing God late, time is already against you. If you get born again at age 30, it looks like you are young, but it takes time to know God. It takes time to argue about the Holy Spirit until you finally open up your heart to receive him. And then taking advantage of the prayer language to build your spirit. And then you now, if you are fortunate to be under a pastor that loves God, it will save you years of error and deleting and rewriting and deleting. Are we together now? Please follow my teaching. We are talking about time redemption here. The Bible says to walk circumspectly. The word circumspect means accurately. That means you do not have time to dilly-dal and shadow box and guess around, make mistakes. You will not always have the time to correct it. So our work in this earth requires a measure of accuracy. And it says in doing that, you have dominion over time and you walk in wisdom when you master time. Ask a dying man what he would want. He would not tell you real estate. Ask a dying man what he would want. He would not tell you a political position. Ask a dying man what he would want. He will not tell you he wants more degrees and all of that as important as they are. A dying man's request is more time. Please look up. You have to understand this. The real asset of a believer is not just land. It's not just investments. It's time. Whatever attacks your time has attacked your life time. It takes time to know God. It takes time to raise godly children. It takes time to build anything that lasts. It takes time to build a great church, to build a great business. And the devil is aware of this. So he helps you live a fruitless life by interrupting your time. Are we together now? If you do not understand this this, um, this introduction, my message may not make sense. The secrets of the kingdom, among other things, help you to exercise dominion over time so that you can redeem time. Why? The days are evil. The days are evil. That means it is possible to be a graduate and just because your father had a vendetta with someone else, you will suffer for 20 years before you get a job because someone vowed to punish your father through you. Are we together? And if you do not know how to redeem time, you will be a victim of many things. Hmm. Time. Why do we want to prosper? It's not just to prove a point. Prosperity has a, a unique ability to redeem time. Are you getting what I'm saying now? 
the, the time wastage that comes when you are poor, many people have not reflected on it. If you reflect on it, you will hate poverty, uh, not just because, uh, how, I, hope, I hope I'm all right. Can I, can I? So when you hate poverty, if you just hate it because it makes you suffer, it's not, it's not a valid reason enough. You must be able to attack it from the interruption that it provides for your time. When you wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow, for instance, and then one day your little child calls you an uncle because it takes time to know your child. And the devil knows that once you have the keys in place, you will have time to serve God. You will have time to be serious. Notice, before I continue, once upon a time, the nation of Israel, when Moses came to cry their exodus to Pharaoh, and he said, look, the God of the Hebrews appeared to me and said, let my people go. Pharaoh looked at him and said, ah, I see. We give you straw and you just walk. So you have a little time to call upon God. Now stop giving them straw. The time they used to pray, let them use it to look for straw. And immediately they told Moses, don't talk to Pharaoh again. We will remain in bondage. Time. Time is very, very important. Oh, teach us to number our days, he says. Not because we're afraid of dying. He says that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. So the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise, redeeming the time. Why? The days are evil. Let me tell you what that means. By default, every man's life carries a disadvantage. Listen. Just follow me. You will understand what I'm saying. By default, there is no advantage anywhere for any man. You introduce systems of advantage into your destiny as you go. The first of them being salvation. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means that when you have two people who have to live their lives by default, it's like making do with whatever grows in a farm. And what grows in a farm without being planted is weed. Are we together now? So I come from a family, for instance, with no advantage. And now it is my responsibility under God to understand God and his ways and then introduce to my destiny systems of advantage. Are we together? That begin to correct the, the errors that I met. So you come from a family where the first person builds a house at 50. It's not a testimony. You come from a family where something is wrong when you are blessed early. You see, all these kinds of things. Now you come to a point where you know the Lord and you love the Lord. And the responsibility is upon you to take advantage of the provisions that the kingdom provides to start correcting. This is why we have things like restoration. Restoration is a system of advantage. And I will restore what? The years. Not just the things. The years. Because when you lose time, you really lost. I will restore the years. I hope you know. Um, please, next time I call two people, um, if you are not one of these gentlemen on suits, just, just sit quietly, huh? please. So let me have two people. I said it. Uh, Please, come, sirs. Oh, no, no, no. Can I have a, another person? That, yes, come. Come. You two come. Thank you. Watch this. Let's celebrate them as they come. You stand here. You two stand here. Watch this. I want to illustrate something. Now, both of you just follow me carefully. This is, this is, this, this, um, two people living out their destinies. Let's start. Now, we call this delay. Keep going. This man wants to move forward, move slowly, but this one has been delayed for 10 years. If I remove the constraint and he's moving, this is progress, not restoration, because he's still delayed. There is a provision in the kingdom that can pick you and bring you back here. Listen, so that if, if you look at my life, you will not find the gap that the delay provided. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Please come again, sir. Watch this. Again, we have two people. 
let's, let's assume that they were married the same time, okay? And then this man now has not been able to have a child. One year, two years, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you give birth, it's a testimony, but it's not yet restoration. So when, because if you will space your children three, three years, under normal circumstances, you will need nine years from the time. Are you seeing that now? And so if God gives you triplets, he didn't just give you children. He did something to time. Please understand this. Now, this example, like many more, have in them shrouded the mysteries of the kingdom that help us. We engage these mysteries. It is because of this provision that the Bible says, for we know. They don't know, but we know. We are in the kingdom, and we know that all things, how many things? Can work together. Not for the good of everybody. For the good of them that love the Lord and them that are called. Did you ever read in scripture that those he predestined, he called? So who is the called here? It's not just a man of God. We have been called, grafted into glory. The Bible says for such people, the concept of being disadvantaged does not truly exist. In the presence of the mysteries of the kingdom. That's why sometimes you say, God, time has gone and he doesn't pay attention. It's because the provisions to remedy it are, are many. There are too many keys that can bring you back. Listen to me. God can keep you for a while while others are getting their jobs and moving. God says, just stay and know me. And you say, God, but I've already, my life. And God says, look. The kingdom we operate in is a kingdom of light. There are too many keys to bring you where you should have been. That's why when we don't trust God because we compare ourselves with others, the Bible says, and they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. Is God speaking to us now? So you come to God and say, Lord, I lost one billion. He will not even answer you because the concept of, of losses is something leaving you, not leaving the earth. It's still there. And the Bible tells us, listen. Did you read in Ezekiel 37 that once upon a time there was a great army and they all became bones, scattered, you thought they were all gone, but all of them, the bones were there. And under a certain condition, not every condition, under a certain condition, the bones that you thought were dry, the Bible says, son of man, can these bones live? Even the prophet who was already used to spiritual things said, Lord, in this matter, only you, only thou knowest. It says, prophesy to the bones. Watch this. And he spoke to the bones and the Bible says the bones had him. They started coming one by one, bone to his bone. Then he says, prophesy upon the four winds and say, O wind, breathe upon the slain. And then they became an exceeding great army. So when you say something left you, it didn't leave the earth. That means there is a condition that can make it come back. So that we don't lament like unbelievers. And the basis of our confidence is that we, we understand that in the economy of God, there is a way to do anything. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he said, no problem. Where fell it? And the axe head float. It floated right to the top and he picked it up. Are we together? When the Bible says all things are possible, it is true. But not under every condition. And I want to show you very quickly just two. Just two of the secrets of the kingdom. In addition to what the Lord showed us yesterday. Irrefutable principles that are backed up by God's own integrity. 
Alléluia.